ravish and I dropped those on the live chat. Those familiar with GMS know that one of their more vile and unpopular teachings is the rape doctrine. Oh, oh okay. So there is something called the rape doctrine. And uh, a camp called GMS teaches it. And it's that basically... Well, let me see if you can kind of f figure... Yeah, let me see. Yeah, yeah I'll down. let you try to figure it out. So you haven't seen this before. I hope this doesn't get this video taken down. Uh, I'm going to... Wait, why would it? Uh, the, topic? the stuff they're saying and things like that. Mm -hmm. This is polite catching GMS on the street. So here we go. This is for you, Marvin. Just for you. What we teach now is that when you go into the law in the ancient world, men, if they saw a woman that they like, they can grab the woman up and rape the woman, man. So, you so, well, 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 let me say. So he's saying that's in the Bible, by the way. I don't know if you caught that. Do you know where he's saying that at? You know, off top? Yes, it's a passage that has to do with punishments and rules and regulations that you give when a rape does happen in Israel. And so they interpret one of those places as an allowance or almost encouragement in certain instances of rape. Mm. That's what they're trying to, to say there. Based off of the punishment. Uh, well, because in certain instances, the, the person who is raped in the Old Testament law can decide if the father agrees and the person has to pay a price to marry the person who raped them because now they're despoiled in their virginity. So it's a way to force the rapist to have to take responsibility for them because now they don't make a good wife in that culture because of that. So, so the so father gets involved with the man and the he woman. He could become his son-in-law. So the family's now involved in this decision of courting. No, they because he had already committed. The, he, this is a little different. He had a good callback. He had already committed the act, and so in that instance, yeah. now it doesn't say that the woman is forced to marry them, okay. and it's not encouragement for rape because in certain sections in the Bible, uh, and other ones, you have it where the punishment is death for the rapist. So this is a way to force responsibility. There's no social security. There's none of that. So it's a way that if you do this, you're also responsible for the woman. Okay. Well. So, like, Khan and Christ mentions, hey, thank you for bringing that up. This is what I mentioned. So, it is. this is in the Bible. They're interpreting it a certain way. Unless she's betrothed, then it's a death penalty. So, if the person's married or going to be married and they do it, then it's death penalty. So, this is to an unmarried virgin. And just so you know, this is GMS, not hardly any of the Hebrews like okay. teach this. Okay. But here's what's interesting. We're, this clip is going to show that it does go back to the original old school, even though most camps have di distanced themselves from it. So here we go. What teach now is that when you go into the law in the ancient world, men, if they saw a woman that they like, they can grab the woman up and rape the woman, man. So you well, 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 let me say this. No, 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 so that was Tahar. He's the leader of GMS. This is Polite. He's big in the conscious community. Okay, and I was going to ask, what is uh, Brother Polite? I know I've seen him. I know I've heard him. What is his uh, spiritual um, belief system or, you know, what have you? He says now that he's an advisor to the stars. So he's kind of transitioned into a mainstream role. But he used to be all about, like, mm, black economics and things like that and, and, and what you'd say black empowerment and uh, apparently a one time claim to be the reincarnation of a pharaoh but he's backed off of that his big oh. thing is black woman is god so he's always got multiple women around him and does little stunts like we'll show him in the bar grabbing two women's posterior and doing things like setting drinks on their rear and saying you know this is he's saying that's conscious spirituality and awareness and he attacks Christianity and the Hebrew Israelites and here's a time where I agree with Dinu we co-sign this particular dialogue the Lord used him to expose wicked doctrine mm -hmm. but what's interesting is he is up on charges that actually involved the accusation being he actually did this in real life to somebody. Poe Light, the one doing the exposing, mm -hmm. right, the right, charges right. he did this to a 14 year old. That's what's so wild about this dialogue now. Quick. So if you've seen GMS You've seen um, the old one, West School. You saw the rapping puppet. You saw Pastor Dow. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, 
fellow followers and believers of the faith and shalom to the elect so anyway uh, a couple uh, i think a little while ago maybe a day or so ago i saw um this video maybe yesterday um apostle tahar's channel i didn't get a chance to watch it but this popped up so i actually watched the original version of um it's called someone westers can't wait to ravish europeans and instantly i thought of numbers 31 i believe it's 31 and i looked at a little bit of apostle tahar's channel that video and he actually went into that but i'm gonna go into another situation as well another scenario in the bible but first i want to go also see the mindset of the way people think now through uh being you know through feminism emasculation and just the way men are today men and women are today it's totally different you know you have to understand everything is different now than it was then um and you know was on his channel the warrior woman you see what i'm saying and a lot of these guys they really bring these things up because the women brings an audience you know they bring the the shekels um another woman says in insanity you know but i want to read a couple of them before i go in further in the lesson um this says somebody said well we pretend to be the chosen people now if they know anything about us they would know the israelites are scattered abroad and looking like different nations and all over one of the earth and to the other but somehow these people in that one land has to be the chosen people you know entire in an entirety right but uh anyway um they are sick Here's a guy, A.J. Yahoo. He said, don't get one West confused with all Israelites. And that's the first thing they do. Um, somebody said, vocab is not being completely honest about the text. It's amazing how you Christians twist the scriptures and nicely interpret that rape stuff is in the Bible. Throw your Bible away. Uh, somebody wrote, um, Deuteronomy 22, 23, and 25 never allowed a man to rape any woman. We're going to go into that real quick. I'm not going to read any more of this. Um, we're going to go to Deuteronomy 22. Um, he went to 22 and 23. If a man happens to, I'm just reading an another translation. And this is why vocab literally had to admit it did happen. <clears throat> and that scholars call it a crime because of what it is today right if a man found sleeping with another man's wife both the man who slept with the wife uh slept with her and woman must die you must purge the evil from israel why because it was another man's wife right if a man happens to meet a town virgin pledged to be married and he sleeps with her you should take them both of them to the gate uh, of that town and stone them to death the young woman, because she was in the town and she did not scream for help. And the man, because he violated another man's wife. But it goes on to say, if a man happens to meet, see, he didn't go all the way down to the 28th verse. If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her and they be discovered, they are discovered, he shall pay the father 50 shekels of silver. Now, here we go with this word rape which you know actually means to take to grab to seize you know like when a cop grabs you and throw you down on the ground and and arrest you and put handcuffs on you you actually got raped in a sense which goes back to a form of violation right but there's different forms of it there's different forms that two it's like the word gentiles are two different manners of gentiles right you got certain words that can mean something. It means the same thing, but the scenarios change and make them something else. Like when you actually rape, or let's say you know, let's say you don't want to use the word rape. Uh, you know, if a man leaves with a woman to have sex with her, and she belongs to a man, then they need to be put to death. You see what I'm saying? But now, the uh, they both would be put to death because she he forced herself on her, knowing that she belonged to somebody. But if a man rapes a woman and takes a woman, that word rape didn't have to be there in the 28th verse. 
In fact, the original word was lechery when you go into the old English. It just simply meant com committing sex. If a man, uh, if a, if a, uh, it says, if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and rapes her, see, that's where they messed up. They didn't have to put the word rape there, right? That word was lechery, which means, and he had sex with her, and they are discovered. He shall pay the father 50 shekels of silver because you had different classes of people, just like today, different classes of women. And, you know, you had certain women, you were women were property, and there were certain women that had a higher value than others, especially ones that was married. The ones that wasn't married, that may have not been betrothed, just like today, you got some women who, who would not be considered high high level. Then another man come and take her. Well, guess what? He's responsible for. Her. But you look at today, these men lay with the woman and run off. Even these Israelite men who talk trash, they pass them around, sleep around. They're not even upholding the obligation to take care of these women. Okay. Now I was gonna go to Numbers thirty-one, which Apostle Tahar went into that already. Um, maybe I'll read a little bit. Let's go to Numbers 31, verse 16. It says, Behold, these caused the children of Israel through counsel of Balaam, right, to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a, a plague among the congregation of the, uh, of the, of the Lord, Right. So when you go into the, the situation with Phineas, that's why he put the javelin through the um, the uh, Israelite that was with the other woman, not because she was a heathen is because of that plague of following Balaam and following those different gods. It says now now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones. Right now, and this sounds harsh, right? I mean, in the world today. It says, now for kill every male among the little ones, right? And kill every woman that have known man by land with them. But all the women, children that have not known a man by lying with them, keep alive for yourselves. This also proves that even in Christianity, in the world we live in today, that nine times out of ten, uh, almost 9.999 times out of ten, we could probably say ten times out of ten, every woman that you've more likely laid with have already laid with other men. That is another form of a spoil of war, right? So uh, it can go more and more than that. Just want to get to that point to show you the differences in the mindset of the way um, – things were you know back then um so let me get another example sometime it can go a little more let me go to deuteronomy 20 of the 20th chapter let's see what we have see what we have here okay let's go to looks like the 10th verse i'm gonna just Go to start at the 10th verse. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it, and it shall be, if it make thee answer of peace and open unto thee, open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee. Now, when we go to Exodus 15 and 3, it says the Lord is a man of war. So the mindset you know, our thoughts are not his thoughts, but the mindset of, uh, uh, let me say, the spirit of the Lord is a man of war, but he's also a man of peace. So it's a balance. So just because we've been living in this corrupt society where we believe, even in this hell, we're comfortable in this hell, this is actually, you know, the worst form of hell, right? Um, it says, and they shall serve thee. And if it uh, and if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when the Lord thy God have delivered it, 
into thy hands thou shalt smite every male therefore thereof with the edge of the sword but the woman and the little ones and the cattle and all that is in the city even all the spoil thereof shalt thy take unto thyself now why would you take woman to the, yourself right now he's going into the, the ravishing which i believe is isaiah 13 the wives ravished and this has always been an issue always been the case it's going to happen again you know the lord is <laughs> the lord is not slack concerning his promises he said things are going to happen it's going to happen right it's the mindset of people today this only really feeds feminism you know it doesn't feed uh masculinity you know and thou shalt now we're not saying to go out and do these things we're not saying we teach that right there is situations where this was on a normal far as it wouldn't have been okay you need to be hung so if it was that much of a crime why wouldn't men stone to death for doing this to a woman that was a virgin now you got to understand why because he have now laid with her they have now become one so this is why paul said in the book of ephesians how can a man hurt him uh, hurt his wife if if they are one flesh you're hurting yourself when the minute you lay with that woman and you got the money to pay that woman father you are bound to her can you imagine that happening today no nah, they wouldn't allow that it's about choice and then you know what happens with choice eh, this is what you have today okay um and when the Lord thy God had delivered to thy hands, thou shalt smite every male therefore the edge of the sword, but the woman and the little ones and the cattle and all in the city, even the spoil thereof, thou shalt take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thy enemies, which the Lord thy God have given thee. Why do these Christians think the Lord just all of a sudden changed? Malachi 3 and 6 says the Lord changes not. The reason why Yahweh Shah, the one you call Jesus, Yahweh Shah came, he died for the nation of Israel, right? For, for the mercy to have mercy on it, the nation of Israel because of their sins and what we're going through now which proves we're not in the new covenant which the Israelites would be in a time time frame now that they need to be covered by the blood of Yahweh or your sins will reach to the heavens man we would never be forgiven all this worship that we've been doing in lifetimes this is why we thank the Lord Yahweh, you know, the sin in his son Yahweh Shah, right? Thus shall do unto all the cities which are ye very far off. <laughs> this is what he said. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations, but of the cities of these people which the Lord thy God doth give thee for an inheritance thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth <laughs> but thou shalt utterly destroy them namely the Hittites and the Amorites so when he said to go into the cities and spoil the men I mean kill the men and children whoever but will save the children you know they will have their sons I mean the little ones but basically uh, the men kill them and, um, sh and you know show wicked wicked uh y young ones but save the the, the uh, children that can that that are innocent that have no part in it and the women because they can be converted this proves that when a man lays with a woman she becomes part of him and him of her his spirit is now on her the problem, and this is the problem with relationships, so-called, by the time you get in one, you got many years of adultery in, 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 you know, in the back, you know, in your spirit. It says the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Pez uh, Perizzites, the Hivites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. As the Lord thy God commanded thee, that they sh uh, they teach you not to do after their abominations, 
which they have done unto their gods, so should you sin against the Lord your God. So you had, in our situation, you had Israelites who were man and woman. We were already, as men, right, at that time, you know, you had men who had warlike spirits. So if you was used to going into these countries and these places and taking these women, when it came to your own women, there was a certain order and law on how to do it. So it wasn't like it was a super advantage for you as a man because you have 20 wives, let's say for an example. That's no big deal back then because it was a normal thing. It wasn't like today in this wicked society, you know, Christmas, you get a bunch of gifts and you're all super happy and excited. Or a man got four wives today and he feels like the king on the throne. You see Israelite groups do that. Yeah, why are you so excited? Because you know in this society it was never acceptable to do that. So when you was able to do it, you were excited about doing it. You know, but back then, no. These are normal occasions, man. You know, and the top elites even know certain things. They got the records. They understand. Since our people over generation to generation, you know, under their mamas, you know how it go. Anyway, Vocab Malone was right on it, but then he turned it and flipped it, you know, when he said that, um, yeah, it showed it in the Bible because it's an NIV. That's why I read that. It says it in his Bible. But he's making it seem like it's a it's a great advantage for us in this society from the hell we go through or whatever the case is. Like now we get to rape a whole bunch of women and we're just enjoying it. Daniel seven eighteen. That's that's bring it bring it on back. But the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Right? How would that happen? Anyway. We're not going to have to, um, in the kingdom, do those things. It's going to be different where we see a woman we like and we'll throw her down. And they're going to want to, first of all, it's going to be understood that all of us are going to be happy with our heritage. So it's going to be different. Uh, Hebrews 8 says he will write his laws into our hearts and minds. That's all I have on that, Shalom.